Stand your ground. Hold back. Stand your ground. Please don't kill me, please. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Oh, I'm bleeding. I think you broke me arm. Ah, is that a tooth? I just spit out a tooth. Oh, not another tooth. Oh, look at me. Look at me. No, don't look at me. Oh, hell. Do what you want. I don't care. Go ahead and look. I'm not a bugbear. I'm just a dirty old bastard running around in a smelly old rug with a bucket for a head. Go ahead. Take all my silver. I don't need it anyway. I was saving it all up for a date with the widow McClary until she found out I'm still living with me mother. Now she won't even speak to me. You know what else? I'm 42 and still a virgin. How pathetic is that? Ah, oh, just kill me, please. Just get it over with. You're just pathetic. Ugly pug! Come and get me! No more! No more! Don't kill me! I was only kidding about your sister. I'll come with you. Put your hands behind your back. Now what? You won't be trying any of them... Preversions, will you? I'm making sure you can't run away again. Or, if you prefer, I could just cut you off at the knees. But you're the one who let me go! And now you're taking me back? Are you bored out of your skull or just wrong in the head? Ow! Stop hitting me! Would you prefer I start stabbing you? Now shut your mouth and come with me. With Kettle in tow, the bard moved on. 
hoping to avoid the trial and bring his prisoner back to Houghton. Well now, what have we here? I don't know you. But Kettle, my clandestine companion, when was the last time we saw each other? Well now, let's see. I was on my way to Houghton and... Oh wait! I remember! Yes, it was... When you pilfered my prized possession, my exquisite eagle charm! It wasn't me, Snarf. It was this beggar right here who stole it. I was bringing him back to you when he knocked me over the head, took it from me person, and tied me up. Hold on a minute. I never saw this thing before in my life. I found it in Kettle's house when I came to take him back to Houghton. <sighs> the perplexing problem is... If I were to let you go, my fear of friends here would consider me a coward. You, you see, they, they might even get into their noggins the notion that they could take over this bloodthirsty band. So, we're going to bash your brains and purloin your property. Nothing personal, you understand. If there's one thing I hate, it's Colonel Trow with delusions of grandeur. Quick! Cut me loose so I can fight! Like hell, you'll bugger off as soon as I do. Are you daft, man? Let me loose or they'll kill us both. As long as you go first, at least I'll have some entertainment before I die. I was right. You are an idiot. And sure as not, they'll bring you with a club and you'll lose what little wits you got remaining. Stay down! Ah, another victory for me! <laughs> see a guy about a gelding. So, I'll suffer you to survive for now. When we assemble again, you won't find yourself as fortunate. Despite the Bard's warm and shining personality, people continue to run from him like the plague. Perhaps he would one day learn that in order to keep friends near, a man such as himself needed to keep them tied up. If only I could find a sock big enough to put in that mouth of yours. Though Fnuff had escaped, the Bard had the unmistakable feeling that they would meet again. Of course, that's how these things always work. If they just stayed around and took their beating like a man for the first time, they'd save me a lot of trouble.
I see you're just as good with animals as you are with people. He started it and I have the oof marks to prove it. Uh, you need help burying your horse? Shh! Don't call it my horse. I've never seen this animal before! If the town elders see that you spilled the blood of my horse here, we'll be stoned. They used to use this site for executions and sacrifices back when we still did that sort of thing. None that about to be here when they decide to start again. Great. Just what I need. A mob of angry villagers at my heels. <laughs> you aren't going to just leave it here, are you? I'll come back after dark when nobody can see me. Now, let's flee from this place. And so the bard, with bell in hand and the smell of horse on his shoes, rushed back to the temple to meet his new lady. She's not my lady. We meet again, my minuscule musical menace. Can we uh, skip the alliteration and get right to the fighting? As you wish, my fiendishly fanciful foe. I'm really going to enjoy killing you. Grudgingly brave but bedraggled bard set out to return to the pleasingly pert Princess Calais. I've had just about enough of these atrocious alliterative announcements. Now I'm doing it. As promised, Hearn met the bard atop the tower. If the bard wished the flame of the tower extinguished, he would first have to extinguish the life of its guardian. You may have made it this far, but your journey ends here. Prepare to die. Die? <laughs> I've got too much to live for. But an old weed like yourself wouldn't understand such things. Time to do a little gardening, I think. I will end your folly here, Bard. Reporting for duty. Bullseye.
You're a little soft, aren't you? Oh, too easy. Down. I bet you'd have said that to any other guy, had any lived to make it this far. The others paled in comparison to you. Looks like most of them were impaled, actually. Yet you survived the journey up the tower. Yeah, but I have a few choice words for the gardener. Stay valiant, my love. You need now go to the second tower, which you can reach by taking a dangerous and peril-filled journey through the mountains. I don't suppose you have a map. If only I did. You will need to go back to Kirkwall and see Bove. Does the term vicious circle mean anything to you? He's waiting for you and will guide you through the mountains. A different instrument is needed to enter the mountain tower. Bove knows of its location and can help you obtain it on your way through. Be certain to take the Spirit Stone of Han. His power will now be added to your own. You better be damn rich, that's all I can say. More than you will be able to spend in your lifetime, my love. But you must hurry. The next torch must be put out soon. Speaking of putting out... Hurry, my champion. I hate it when she does that. The Bard had no time for rest, for the danger of this tower had not yet passed. I let you roam my city and you repay me by stealing my loot and killing my men. It's my loot, Snotbeard. You and your little girls were just watching it for me. This little girl's about to gut you from green to groin.
victory for me. To tell you the truth, I didn't expect to see you here. I congratulate you on making it thus far. Perhaps there is more to you than first meets the eye. You again? Let's put an end to this. Such bravado. I wonder, can you back it up? Tough talk from a man with a small army behind him. Are you that fearful of me? We'll see how afraid I am. Leave the bar to me. Prepare yourself. Get him, Kathban! Show him what for! You fight like an old woman! Better than fighting like a trout. Four to one odds again. Oh, I bet that hurt. I'll take those odds. brave hero fought his way to the summit of the tower, and before him stood the flame that he must extinguish. Unfortunately, before that stood Lou, who would not give in without a fight. You've made it, I see! No taunts now, eh? Where's all that wit I heard down in the arena? I've gained a measure of respect for your fighting prowess. It saddens me that I'm gonna have to kill you now. I wish I could say the feeling's mutual, but the cold fact is... I expect I'll quite enjoy it. That's the spirit! the crap lady what gives with all the dead refusing to stay dead yes um i feared that would happen i would appreciate it if we discussed all fears up front from now on i'm not a big fan of surprises very well i should tell you that the denizens of the underworld are rising up trying to put an end to your quest why are they after me they know it was you who defeated Han. because of this they know you're trying to set me free their leader is a ruthless man who'll stop at nothing to keep you from freeing me. Yet again, something I wish I knew earlier. I am the only one who can stop them. Until I'm set free, darkness will engulf the land. You must hurry. The longer you take, the more power the forces of evil will gain. Soon, I won't even be able to hold them back. I should have just settled for the farmer's daughter. You must get to the island tower quickly. Time is short. First, go to Downby, where you'll find a man named Dugan. He's in a tavern called the Aiken Drum. He'll have further instructions for you. Oh joy, another journey. Why not tell me where I need to go right now? Dugan is locating an object for you, something of great power. 
You'll need it to enter the third tower. The fate of the world is in your hands, my love. As long as there's no pressure involved. And more pressures were soon to come. Unbeknownst to the Bard, the servants of the mysterious Finnick were making good on their master's command to stop the Bard at any cost. Continue on, despite our efforts. If you can call what you've done up to this point an effort. You are so going to rue this day. We know what you're Mendel. up to. First the forest tower, then through the mountain pass for the mountain tower. Mendel. No, no, you're going to try to get through Stromness to get to the island tower. Well, Mendel, not on my you watch. Idiot. Thanks for the tip, Mendel. That should make finding my way to the final tower that much easier. You knew already. Don't pretend you didn't. I mean... I mean, that's not really how... Seriously. You knew, right? At least I didn't say Silence. anything about the... You think you can slay our brothers and not pay a price? I think I pulled a groin muscle fighting one of your droids, if that makes you feel any better. It's time to cause you a little more pain than that. Oh, I don't know about that. Have you ever pulled a groin muscle? Haven't you learned by now that you can't hurt me? Oh, I think I can hurt you, my friend. Nice dog you up there. Allow me to introduce my pet. My God! Now you'll pay. Today, you'll do the paying. The fiend. Oh. We triumph. Somebody in need of healing. Victory. I'll miss you, little friend. But by God, I'll avenge you, I swear it. This isn't over yet. Saddened by the loss of his faithful companion, the bard somehow found a way to carry on. With a tear in his eye. It's not a tear. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. I, I, I've got something stuck in my eye. Oh, have it your way. So, with something in his eye, the bard left behind his stiff-as-a-board pup and continued his quest for the Shadow Axe. The bard soon came upon the tracks of some dread beast. Even as he examined the tracks, a fellow who clearly had a serious problem approached. Oh, laddie! Oh, lad! Come again? Well, maybe clearly was the wrong word. I'll tell you, I better feel but cut you down, run your ring, but rub it through, ah! Tell you what, spit the rocks out of your mouth, then we'll talk. Oh, oh, boy, no knuckle Oh, I wish you'd gotten in your blood, or you'd steal your fool! Would it help if I just killed the knuckle of it? Well, of course! Now get on your guy, you want the Christian scum! I'll take that as a yes.
I stand ready. The fiend. Oh, ma! Hold the skull! It paid it all the tear to spell! You better be thanking me. I'm betting that you're the man I'm here to see. Are you McGrath? I am McGrath! What is it for? Well, I almost think Dugan is playing some kind of joke on me. Dugan! Dugan, so how are you? You made me a bird. He was talking about... Well, Dugan, I hear something there. Oh, bloody hell. Looks like I'm going to have to drag you back to see Dugan. Maybe he speaks whatever it is you're speaking. With McCrath in tow and the knuckle of it nothing more than a memory, the bard headed back to Downby hoping to decipher McCrath's ramblings and move one step closer to earning his reward. Do you seek uh, the Shadow Axe? Yes, I, William Hatcher, the Chosen One, am here for the Shadow Axe! Then die. Do you seek uh, the Shadow Axe? Yes, it has been promised to me. Then it's yours. Wait, it's that easy? I mean, there's no crazy spells from you. Fight to the death, forcing me to jump and dodge and run around like an idiot. I've had enough of the violence. Take it. On second thought, I actually like your idea better. I've got to learn to keep my mouth shut. Finally, the bard learns something which had been all too obvious to most of us from the beginning. You think? Come to me. Yeah, no need to raise your voice. To me. Be right there. No need to raise your voice. Be right there. Over here. No need to raise your voice. Be right there. Yeah. Finally in hand, the bard could gain entrance to the third tower where his princess waited. Most women would be happy with flowers, but Princess Calais seemed a bit more high maintenance. You think? Hello, this can't be good. What on earth did you bury here, brother? Oh my! That's where I buried all the animal parts I didn't need. You know, I really don't like the sound of that. Quite frankly, I don't like the looks of it either. fortune for this. Healing! Attack! I'll take 
care of things. to make light of me. John, I'll teach you I'll to make light of, of me. Attack. I'll take care of things. you're getting yourself into, fool of a pard. Turn back now before it is too late. Not knowing what I'm getting myself into has been the latest trend for me. No point in thinking that's going to change. In the spirit of things, however, I'll give you one last chance to surrender to me. How does that sound? I cannot abandon my eternal vigil. You leave me no choice. Over here. I'll be right on over, sir. I stand ready.
Ready for duty! To hell with the laggard! Sorry I'm late. Had a bit of trouble with the weather. Hold on a minute. You're still a spirit. Of course, my love. But this is the third tower. True, my love. But you're supposed to be here. I mean, in the flesh. No, my love. I'm imprisoned atop the tower in Downby. You said you'd be in the third tower. No. I said you needed to put out the flames in three towers to set me free. And I have. My prison in the Downby Tower could not be opened until all three flames were extinguished. Now you can come to the final tower and rescue me in the flesh. Soft, warm, sucker. All right, all right, just put a sock in it. It's growing a little old, even for me. Just tell me, how many lands must I venture to before this so-called final tower? 
and how many bows and instruments must I collect and how many more idiots must I converse with? Nothing more. Just come to the tower. I'll believe that if I live to see it. Uh, there is, of course, a slight problem. The door to this tower has been sealed and uh, I have no way out. I can help you. The magic that binds me grows weak thanks to your efforts. I was aware of Finnick's plan to trap you and have been conserving my energy so that I could aid you this one final time. Your transportation to Danby awaits. Hmm, interesting. Look, could you uh, conjure up something that sticks to the ground? A nice carriage, perhaps? Oh, you'll be perfectly safe. I'll await your arrival at the top of the tower. I long for our first kiss. I'll tell you what, if you're not there, you can kiss my... I hate people who have to be the ones to get the last word in. And so our brave bard would soon mount the fiery beast and ride through turbulent skies, winging his way towards destiny and the... Oh, excuse me, I, uh, I get a little sick even thinking about flight. Uh, I give up. And so our brave bard mounted the fiery beast, hung on for dear life, and tried to keep down his lunch. to this at last. One man on his own, a poet and a rogue, with no friends to speak of, no one to mourn his passing, should it come to that. Even those beside him are no more boon companions than bond servants, summoned by sorcery and song, as cold and indifferent to him as the light of a wandering star. But to know where he is, and what may yet come to pass, we need to know who he is, and where he is from. Mistake coming here, Bard. You have no chance to make it past me. Turn around and leave. If I have no chance, then why are you offering me a way out? <laughs> are you scared? Without your big beastie backing you up. This time, I'll take care of you myself, Bard. And to know that, we've got to begin elsewhere. I am not going through all that again. Can we please just get on with it? Uh, sorry, I got caught up in the moment, as you were.
champion. At last I can look upon your face. You're even more beautiful in person, my lady. One moment and I shall free you from your prison. You are such a fool, bard. And uh, may I know the name of the man who thinks me a fool? Don't listen to him. He's the one who's been trying to kill you. Yeah, I've noticed. My duty is to stop any man who threatens to unleash evil upon the land. And you are that man. I've been fighting this evil to set the princess free so she can send you and all of your demonic little friends back to hell where you came from. A place she's very familiar with since that is where she's from. She's the ruler of these fiends you speak of. She is from the very bowels of hell itself. I know she's a little bossy, but no reason to get rude. He lies! Kill the bastard! You're not helping your case here. Are you insinuating the princess has something to do with everything that's been going wrong in the world? Your betrothed there is a direct cause of it all. Now you've gone too far. She's not my betrothed. My love, don't you see what he's doing? This is his last desperate attempt to stop you from setting me free. The, the minions he set upon you have failed, so he's resorting to telling you desperate lies. Please, don't let him confuse you. He is the one behind all of the evil that assails the land. I will fight you if I must, but she is the enemy, not I. She has been playing you for the fool. I'm not stupid. There's no way this woman is the root of all evil. I mean, look how hot she is, for crying out loud. You have eyes, yet you do not see. You have ears, yet you do not hear. You have a brain, but it is located Get in your... To the point, please. Calais has been held captive here since the last time she attempted to cover the land in darkness, a thousand years ago. It took the power of four mighty wizards to defeat her and entrap her here, ensuring that her reign of terror was ended. All this time she's been looking for a man, a chosen one, if you will, to set her free so she can rule again. I'm afraid you've been only a pawn in her game, one she will surely dispose of once set free. This is why I hate dating. My darling, he speaks half-truths. I was imprisoned here not by wizards, but by four demonic warlords. You've seen some of them and vanquished them yourself. It was I who defeated their armies, although I was weakened in doing so. After the battle, they trapped me here while they rebuilt their forces. They will rule this land forever, unless you kill him and set me free. Listen, I. I think I need to sleep on this. You must choose now, my friend. Time is running out. Look inside your heart, love. Set me free. The time had come. The bard was forced to choose, and he knew that he'd better choose wisely. All right, I've made my choice. Well, it's about bloody time. Don't get too excited. I didn't choose you. You choose Calais? I didn't say that either. Tell us, my champion, whom do you choose? A very logical choice. Me. You choose you? Exactly. What the hell does that mean? What kind of choice is that? As far as I'm concerned, an excellent one. But what about our future? Well, let's look into our crystal ball, shall we? If I fight either one of you, I could be dead. If I kill one of you, and it's the wrong one, I either end up in hell on earth or in a relationship from hell. Literally. So, fighting is really a no-win situation. Even if that fighting can save life as we know it? I'll let you two figure that out. In the meantime, these undead aren't a bad lot, really. This is unacceptable, you miserable little rat! You will free me, and you will free me now! There's a twist. I'm intrigued. <laughs> and oddly aroused. But, uh, I'm afraid I still choose to walk away. Good luck and, uh, oh, don't forget to write. Come back here, you disloyal coward, and bow before your queen! 
Come back here, you weak-minded fool, and kill your queen! You two have serious control issues. You realize that, don't you? So the Bard decided to take the short and narrow road, otherwise known as the easy way out, to the nearest bar. Who says the undead don't know how to party? <laughs> The plight of the world obviously far from his mind, which by all accounts only has room for coin and cleavage. The bard enjoyed his drinks with his newfound friends. Well, that is until... Well, then, that's another story. The heart is just a muscle. Nothing more. Nothing less. Perhaps I underestimated you. Those who are foolish enough to believe that the heart is in any way connected with love, whatever the hell that is, are living in a fantasy world, my friend. Then again, I may have been right all along. The heart just pumps blood where it needs to go, and that's all that matters to me. If you catch my drift. Perhaps I was right all along. And after seeing Calais and hearing your story. You mean the truth? Well, I must say I am torn. Normally, in a situation like this, I'd flip a coin. I have a coin right here. But... Since she's hot, and you're not, and since she has all the coins I'll ever need, then why waste my time? Sorry, my friend, but your story just doesn't wash. She's a thousand years old. <laughs> Please. Oh, I knew I could count on you, my love. If that heart of yours pumps some blood to your other head, you'd see what a catastrophic choice you've made. What are you, blind? Look at her. If you side with Calais, this land will be doomed to darkness forever. I, uh, do my best work in the dark. You really are an idiot. Your foolishness will stop right here. Prepare to die. Very well. Hold on, Princess. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, maybe two. Taken my measure of the Spider Square Have at the Fiend. Bullseye. Ow! 
on the hook. Victory! With a words, Princess. Before we embrace, I must take my true form. I thought that didn't happen until after ten years of marriage. Oh, you're going to like this. Queen of Darkness. Well, of course. But does it really matter? How does it feel to be at the side of the ruler of the underworld? Every woman I was ever involved with ended up being the woman from hell. Huh, now I have the real thing. Could be fun. obtained everything his heart had ever desired. At the expense of the rest of the world, of course. Thus concludes the Bard's tale. Finally, the end. I thought I'd never be rid of it. Never ask me to read this half of the story again, please. I heard that. Yes, actually, if I look deep into my heart, I can only come to one logical conclusion. What is that, my love? Never trust a woman. What? Wouldn't you know it? There's always an angle, isn't there? Give me money, plough the fields, let me out of my magical prison to enslave all of humanity. And I fell for it. Again. Happens to the best of us. But you and I, we're meant to be. Oh, give it up. You've been plucking my strings from the get-go. And you've been royally plucked. No more. You know, one minute this beautiful woman appears in a puff of smoke and a flash of light and the next she turns out to be some sort of evil hellspawn. How do I always miss the subtle signs? Well, let me tell you, this whole thing, it's over. Is there nothing I can say to change your mind? There's not even anything you can do to change my mind. Not even a kiss? What? You know, a kiss. A simple kiss. It is the only way I can show you how I truly feel. Oh, well. Uh, Be careful, Bard. What the hell? I've come all this way. I mean, <laughs> a kiss never killed anyone, right? Mortal, you had the chance to rule at my side and live forever, but now you shall die like the dog that you are. I try to warn you. Is it me, or is she still hot? Prepare to experience excruciating pain that will last an eternity. I've already told you, the relationship is off. Does it hurt?
too easy. Does it hurt? On your knees. Complete. I must say that was quite impressive. You've got to show a moose boss, or they'll just walk all over you. Now that she's gone. Things will return to normal. Crops will grow and the dead will remain in their graves. You came very close to destroying life as we know it. But you've redeemed yourself. Just show me the way out of this damn tower. The promise of love and riches lost. The near destruction of the world as we know it. Death, misery and chaos. Under the weight of such trials, most men would emerge changed. Some for the better, and some for the worse. But for the Bard, things ended the same way they did death. Well, my friend, back in business.